hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay, and this is Life with Lindsay. Today, we have a whip and chat. If you do not know what a whip and chat is, that is when I work on my current whip, WIP, which is work in progress. Um, this is Sugar High from Lizzie Falcon over at Treasure Studios Art. I will link the unboxing for this one up in the eye if you guys are interested in seeing that. Um... You can pull out whatever it is you are working on. It can be a craft project, a house project. I've had people tell me they watch whipping chats or watch whipping chats while they are doing. I'm gonna sculpt while you do it. You're gonna sculpt while I do it. That's fantastic. That's my husband. In case you guys didn't know, um, we'll do dishes, laundry, household things um, while they're at work, while they're driving, while they're pretending to work. You know, all sorts of things. So, however you whip and chat, there's no right way or wrong way to do it. If you are new, hi, welcome. My name is Lindsay, and I do mainly diamond painting and other crafting-related content. I don't know why all of these drills look like they've shifted, but that's okay. I might have just placed them poorly. Um, I would love for you to like, subscribe, hit the bell, hop aboard the Hot Mess Express. Let's be friends. If you've been here before, hi, welcome. Thank you for coming back. Uh, it is always appreciated, you guys. I am... Not sure that that made any bit of a difference. And also, I don't know that anyone really cares that much to see, like, excuse me, how in-depth I just use my straightener. So, um, this canvas, sorry, I'm trying to adjust the cord so hopefully I didn't change the location. Is that what I want to say? Probably. Probably not. I don't know. I'm a hot mess. Per use. What's new? Um, I totally lost my own train of thought. So, you know, there's that. I am working on the entire width at once, so it's mostly in frame, but I may have to shift things around, but I don't know that anyone's actually, like, watching, watching, or just, like, you know, lurking and working. So, I'm going to tell you guys about my week, except for Monday, apparently. I wrote down my notes of Tuesday and labeled that Monday, so I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have not a clue what I did. <laughs> not a clue on Monday. So, uh, I don't know, but last Sunday I was able to get a bunch of videos filmed and edited, including, um, the last week's Whip and Chat, um, you know, Sundays are typically, they, they, I try to make Sunday the day that I film and edit my Whip and Chat, and by edit I mean really just put in any cute little gifts or anything that needs to go on the screen. I'm not editing out things. Uh, I have. Um, but in general, it's just... Okay, my kid's banging on something. Let's all say hi to Briar. You know? <sighs> yeah, she does like to say hi to the people. However, she's been super quiet for the last however long. And now, of course, I sit down to record. But anyway, so I record, and then I edit it back and get it processed onto YouTube so that I can make it go live Monday morning. So that's typically my goal. You know, sometimes life happens. It's the only scheduled video, I'm going to say, that I do. Um, and, you know, sometimes we need to be flexible with that because we need to be flexible with ourselves, right? Life. My mother-in-law this week, she called, me, she called and left a message, and she was like, I haven't talked to you guys in a couple days, and I just want to make sure that everything's okay, and I'm like, yeah, it's just been chaotic, like, beyond belief chaotic, um, I knew that the older she got, and the more things she got into, the more chaotic life would be, but I didn't expect it to go from, like, zero to a hundred, and that's kind of what it feels like, um, but I'll tell you guys all about our week, and what we did, um, but... Um, this should come as no surprise to anyone who's been following along any of the whipping chats that I've been doing. Um, this video will contain discussions of potty training and poop related things. <sighs> so if that's not your thing, I, you know, it's not going to be my whole whipping chat, but I am putting that out there. Putting that out there in the beginning. Um, because Sunday, have you ever had to wait out a child to poop because... Like, I swear to God, my husband and I, we were just, like, on poop watch. We knew it was going to happen. She was withholding and avoiding, so she wouldn't get... She thinks she's going to get in trouble for going to the bathroom. But in reality, our thing is, like, why don't you tell us... Like, she's well aware of when she's gone to the bathroom in her diaper. Um, she just doesn't want to tell anyone. And I think she doesn't want to tell us because she thinks she's going to get in trouble. 
I don't know why. We tell her every single day, you are not going to be in trouble. Like, the, the opposite. Mommy and Daddy will be thrilled if we walk in and you tell us that you went in your diaper. I would much prefer she goes on the toilet, but baby steps. Literal baby steps. Um, but that was a day that, like, she knew we were on high alert. And we were just watching her like a hawk. And she, it was like, we just had to wait her out. It was, it was... Like a stakeout. Yeah, it was. You guys. Where is she? I lost track of her. Uh, is she pooping? Is she in the corner? Her new thing now is she goes in between the door of the closet and her armoire. And sometimes she just makes herself like a little place to lay down. She puts her blanket. Um, she has now, we've taken everything out of her room. She has a pillow, a blanket, and she gets one soft friend when she goes to bed. She gets nothing during nap time. Um, because the amount of times that we've had to clean <sighs> soft friends, blankets, sheets, pillows, things like that. I'm like, okay, you have to show us you can be more responsible before I let you sleep with a soft friend in your room again. Um, soft friends are like her number one thing. And for anyone who's like, what the hell is a soft friend? It's a soft animal. She just calls them soft friends. Because she has hard toys and soft friends. And you can't take a hard toy up to bed. That's like a definite no in our house. And it's funny, the one day I was like, Briar, you can't take that. That's a hard toy. And she just looks at me like dead in the eye and she goes, yeah, but I don't plan on sleeping, so it's okay. And I'm like, you little punk. I remember when we used to let her take hard toys and you just heard me. Yeah, you just. <laughs> like 45 minutes straight. It would either be on like the side of her bed or on the windowsill, neither of which I like. And then the one day it was like against the glass and I was like, yeah, no, we're not, we're not doing that anymore, friend. Um, you know, I know other people who have kids that have like a whole playroom in their bedroom. That's not our kid. She has an imagination, so she doesn't need to have toys up there to keep herself entertained. But the more stuff she has up there, the less sleeping that gets done, so... And, um, yeah, so that's what we did, really, Sunday. Um, but I could not tell you for the life of me what we did Monday. <sighs> I don't think we had any therapies or anything Monday. I could be wrong on that. No, we didn't. So, I don't even think, I don't, I really, and I even asked my husband, I was like, did we do anything Monday? He's like, I don't know. When I tell you guys, like, I can't remember what we do, like, what we did yesterday. I mean, I can remember yesterday because it was an eventful day. But I can't remember what we did, like, sometimes the same day. I'm like, shoot, what did we do earlier? What did we have for lunch? What did we do? You know, so that's why I, I keep notes of things. Um, you know, some notes are better than others. <laughs> but Tuesday, Tuesday was um, a day. Let's just say that. So... Anytime we need to, like, get out the door and do something, it always feels like we're running behind. I am the kind of person, like, pre-Briar, if I wasn't, like, five, ten minutes early to everything, like, I was, like, freaking out I'm late. I still don't like to be late, especially if we tell somebody we're going to be somewhere at a certain time, we're going to pick someone up at a certain time. I do not like to show up late. Like, I, it just makes me very uncomfortable, very anxious. Um... But we were running behind, and on our way out the door, my neighbor Carla, uh, if you guys haven't been here very long, um, I have a batshit crazy neighbor, and the antics that goes on in that house with that woman, and whatever's going on in that house, um, I do tend to do a lot of updates and let people know, because people are always wondering, like, what's going on, but for those who are new here and you have no idea, I'm gonna leave the whip and chat up in the eye, um of the time she decided to let herself into our house. Um, in case anyone is curious, I am using the Harbor Freight storage containers. I just missed a drill. That's why I pulled that one out. But I am using the, I forget what the name of this container is, but it holds like two and a half of the 24 piece sets or they're technically 25 piece sets. But just total tangent on that, if you guys are ever buying the 25-piece set from Harbor Freight, the 25th, 25th, the 25th piece is the actual container that all the little containers go in. Why am I missing this symbol? Um, there's so much confetti in this that 
surprises. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. This is like their rendering style. Um, I'll get back on the story, but I just, I understand there are a lot of shops. Okay, didn't I just put that down or did I put it in the wrong spot? Which is totally also plausible. Um, ooh, you guys are hearing that hair dryer type sound. That's my husband. He's using a heat gun. Okay, I just dropped that onto my canvas. <sighs> if ever there were a time to like pause and refresh, that would have been it. Um, now I don't even know what I was talking about. Oh, it's one of those things that, like, if you're doing the outline of a body, like Diamond Art Club, they'll do like the black lines or whatever color they're using. Like, I did the Simona Candini and that was outlined in hot pink because it was a mermaid. Um, and that's her style drawing it. Um, but some of these shops, like DIY Moon Shop does it, TSA does it, where they make the outline like a bunch of different gradients. And it's like, can we just simplify it? And that's my personal opinion. I know there are a lot of people out there who love the rendering styles of like a TSA or a craft, not a craftably, a uh, DIY Moon Shop. But I just feel like we've gotten to the point here where it's like, it should not take me this long to do a section this size because all of this is like five, six, seven different shades and it's just to outline her leg. <sighs> Although I'm currently working on like one color at a time in this area. What is going on? There we go. Woo. If you guys are wondering if I'm always like this, the answer is yes. I'm like this on camera. I'm like this off camera. I am just always a mess. So anyway, Tuesday, we were running behind. Carla is out there. If you looked up disheveled in the dictionary, like that was her. And it wasn't that early. Like we were going ice skating. So we were probably leaving around 8.45 in the morning. She was outside, like, huddled in the corner, scarfing down her cigarette. Her hair was all over the place. Looked like she had a pretty rough night. Um, you know, no judgment, you do you. But I was like, good lord. And then she realized all of us were coming out and not just mommy. And I think she tried to, like, shrink herself in the corner so we wouldn't notice her. Uh, it did not work. I did notice her and I continue to be jovial and silly with my kiddo to kind of be extra obnoxious. <laughs> uh, you guys, we figured out, my husband figured out that the motorcycle we see in her garage, because she is the queen of leaving her garage open. I think she leaves it open because she wants people to see like, I've got this bike and I have this canoe and like, She's had a boat in her garage. It's either a canoe or a kayak. I can't really tell. Um, for as long as we've lived here, not once have I ever seen it be loaded onto a roof rack and taken out anywhere. Um, but anyway, the motorcycle apparently belongs to her adult daughter's boyfriend. Um, so that was interesting. I'm like, don't they have their own place? Like, why is he storing his motorcycle in her garage? But... Anyway, we were running late and she was out there and she's one of those, like, she's very crotchety. What is that noise? Okay, hopefully I just freaked myself out because I feel like I hear something in this pile of cardboard. <sighs> Anybody else like that? You hear noises? Not like I'm hallucinating kind of hearing noises. <laughs> um... It's never, like, ever 100% quiet in this house. And when it is, that's when I hear things. Okay. I'm definitely... Oh, because this is about to fall. God damn it. I'm thinking there's, like, a critter over here. And it's just a piece of... All right. One minute. Okay. For real, you guys, I have a giant pile of cardboard next to me that is from packages or diamond paintings or whatever. Um... And when it gets broken down, we take it downstairs. Um, but right now, a lot of the boxes... Because usually when I film an unboxing... I think I've talked about this before. I just batch film. So a lot of times when I'm filming, I will uh, film multiple videos in a row, a row. 
So if I'm filming like four, five, six videos, that's all of them have a cardboard box. Every single one of them has a poly mailer or a box or some shipping material. And so it just gets piled up over here until it gets broken down and we, we take it downstairs. My husband has cardboard, but he's much better about taking care of it than I am. Um, so I'm sitting over here hearing what sounds like almost like a mouse. Like I don't want to jinx myself, but like a mouse. And I was like, uh oh, I don't want to hear that. Really what it was is I have a piece of foam core, like the poster board, the real thick stuff. That sometimes I'll use to put on top of whatever canvas I'm working on. So I can just put something else on top to unbox it. Or um, for photos, if I need something that I don't want to take a picture on the floor. Because like I can't get the right angle. I'll put it on my table. And then I will use that to help extend the length of my canvas. So it's not draping off the table for a photo. <sighs> That's what it was. The poster board was slowly creeping down. And... Um, it got me, guys. It got me good. Um, hopefully, in, like, real time, it wasn't as long as it felt. I felt like I was just dead silent for, like, a minute. I know it was probably just a few seconds, but... Um, we uh, had ice skating. Briar was put in the penalty box for not listening. Um, and then, very uncharacteristic of her, she was... I couldn't tell you exactly what she was saying, because I couldn't hear, like, word for word what she was saying... But she was definitely saying some not very nice things to a little boy who, he's much newer. He's only been doing this for a little bit. And we actually just had our um, one-year anniversary of Briar's first ice skating lesson. But she was making comments to him, something along the lines of like, why do you keep falling or can't you get up or something like that? Because I heard her coaches say... You have to be more patient with him. He's just learning. This is a skill he doesn't have yet. And we talked to her about this afterwards. And I was like, Briar, that's not very nice. And she was just looking at us like we were, you know, ten-headed aliens. And I was like, she's had moments where she gets really down on herself because she doesn't think she's good enough. And I'm like, wouldn't it hurt your feelings if somebody told you that you weren't doing a good job when you're trying your hardest? You know, you got to remember, kiddo, you spent the first whole six weeks just screaming and rolling around on the ice you didn't you didn't want to participate this little guy is participating but if he's falling he has to learn how to do it he has to learn how to get up and you making him feel bad for not being at the same level as somebody who's been doing this for a year that's not nice and she was just looking at us and I think she understood the concept but she didn't realize like how mean she was being but when you can see like she's got two coaches um and they definitely are like good cop, bad cop. When you could see how upset good cop coach seemed in that moment, like you could tell like Briar was completely out of line. And Briar is her favorite student. Like she makes no, <laughs> she does not hide that. <laughs> um, and I, it just, it, it hurt. Cause I could see that she was hurting this little boy's feelings. And I don't know if she was doing it to like assert dominance or for whatever reason, but we had a long conversation about that and how that's not okay. Well, needless to say that didn't translate quite as well as we had hoped because then she turned into a total nightmare. She didn't want to listen, which is not surprising. Um, she threw this massive tantrum in the car because she kept demanding that we go do something fun. And I was like, no, Briar, that's not how it works. So usually after ice skating, we go get lunch. Um, and then sometimes we'll, because we're already out doing stuff, we'll go do something fun. Um, and doing something fun typically means spending mommy's money and going to Five Below um, or daddy's money, it doesn't matter whose money, but spending money that is not hers, and buy, it's, right now, the main thing is, hot, is I almost said hot topic, is it, five below, she loves five below, I think she feels accomplished, because if I tell her she has ten dollars to spend, she can get ten different things, if she wants to, and then we always end up buying, like, some candy, or an accessory, or something as well, like, it's not, you know, but she just freaked out to the point that we were like, then she's like, well, then I want to eat at a restaurant. And we're like, Briar, we are not taking you anywhere with the behavior you have right now. Like you going out and getting to do stuff you want to do. Those are all treats. Those are not given. Those are not things that you need to be expecting. Random drill on my canvas. Um, 
case anyone is curious, these are the old small rounds from TSA. Okay, that's like stuck in my placer. Um, which I'm excited to see like the overall effect if it gives it like the same level of details that perhaps a square one would. Um, that's actually why I bought this kit in the small rounds because I, I wanted to to see um and then they've since switched to regular size rounds and if you guys don't know what i'm talking about tsa used to have rounds that are the same size as squares um there's squares and rounds are 0.2 millimeters difference in size um and that's why you get more detail with the squares because they are smaller so you can place more of them in an area and they also give cleaner lines because they're square so anyway we um we were so stressed out and worked up because of the whole lunch thing that we literally just got her, like, we went to McDonald's, did, went to the drive-thru, just picked her up food. And we're like, you're going to eat this at home. Like, we're done. We're not, we're not going out to a restaurant. We're not doing anything else. And, of course, that meant that um, mommy and daddy also didn't get to eat lunch at a restaurant, which is one of the things I look forward to most on days that we ice skate because... Um, it's nice to be able to go eat outside of your own home and, um, it's, you know, I don't want to be like it's tradition, but it's, it's kind of turned into this is what we do. But I, I was just over it. My kid was just freaking out. I can't believe I spent this much time talking about one day, but, um, she got her happy meal. She was fine. She ate it. But then over her nap, she took off her poop-filled diaper, put it in the corner of her room. I don't think she intentionally got into it. I think she took it off on purpose, but then she ended up getting poop on my white rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. Um, and yes, he is white, so that's what prompted us to take everything out of her room because, again... She was doing all this, but then she covered it up with her blankets and her pillows. You guys, I had no idea that that was there. Oh, no, I knew that was there because I, I walked in and she was butt naked. But we later found, like, a poop nugget that she had hid under something else. And I'm like, God damn it, kid, why are you doing this? Do you want to know why she's doing it? ROT has us reading, everybody poops to her. You know what? They spend an entire page talking about animals like cats. My kid's obsessed with cats. And how they hide their poop. Guess who was hiding their poop? Yeah. So, um, now we're no longer reading the books because I'm like, I can't do this. I can't, I can't go through this, even if it's just once a week. Taking off the diaper, getting into the diaper, making a I, I just, my tank is on empty. And I know that everybody has something to say about it. And I have to say the amount of people who've reached out to me privately to let me know how difficult it was for them to potty train their child or their child is my kid's age or older and still not potty trained, like things like that. I just, I'm very frustrated with how easy it can be for some people and how hard it is for us. Like, ugh. This is consuming our lives. Like we have to plan things around the day because of her bathroom habits. And her OT wants us to be reading these poop books to her when we think she's going to go so that it makes her more comfortable. And I'm like, my kid is quite literally taking what the pages are saying. Like, she's literally taking the poop out of her diaper and hiding it in the corner. So, I can't. I, <laughs> I am so done and I know her OT is going to be like, oh, why did you stop reading the books? And I'm going to tell her, like, if you want to come over and clean up after my kid, then that's fine. And in case anyone is new here and they don't know, like, our kid, if she goes to the bathroom in her diaper, in her pull-up, whatever, um, it is 100% her responsibility to clean herself. Uh, we take her into the bathroom, we dump whatever we can into the toilet, and she wipes herself, she cleans herself up. And then she washes her hands. We go about our day. But she can't do all of the laundry stuff by herself. She can't be trusted to go in there and pick up the poop nugs and throw them into the toilet. Like, I, it's just, 
these are things that mommy and daddy end up doing or mommy or daddy or, you know, like whoever's there. It's just the level of being overwhelming. I can't even describe. It'd be different if it was literally like once or twice, but I'm lucky if it's like once or twice a week at this point, it's like, fuck man, <laughs> for real. I'm just, I am so over it. And it's like sucking the life out of me. It's sucking the life out of my husband and myself. Because it's like, how many times can you tell somebody the same thing over and over again? And they recognize that they know it. Yeah. It's not like she's like, oh, okay. Because like, she even, we even told her, like, look, if you just tell us that you have to go to the bathroom, or you tell us that you have gone to the bathroom, like, we'll throw a party. Like, a damn parade. You want a toy, let's go get a toy. Like, it doesn't matter. You tell us that you have to poop, even if you're just pooping in your diaper. That's somewhere to start, and that's not happening. <laughs> Nothing is happening. <sighs> but it's very frustrating. And then we'll have days, like, um, today is one of those days. She'll have a day where she'll go to the bathroom all day long on the toilet and won't, she'll never need a change of a diaper or pull-up. Like, she'll be in the same one all day and she just uses the toilet. Or, like, today, no matter how many times I prompt her and say... All right, let's go sit on the potty. No, I don't want to. No, I don't need to. I don't have to. <coughs> and has yet to go to the bathroom at all on the toilet today. Um, and it is, I don't know, two something in the afternoon. 2.40 in the afternoon, my time. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter because you guys are watching this tomorrow or in the future, I guess. But anyway, um... I was so over it, and uh, I think as many people are, I am a, a bit of an emotional eater, and I took myself to the bakery, and I picked up some things for myself, and my husband, of course, my daughter's like, what is that? I'm like, nothing. It's nothing for you. Which, she did get something, but there's nothing more satisfying when you're pissed off at somebody to be like, I don't have anything for you. <laughs> Although I've told her she has something in the fridge, um, and she still hasn't eaten it, so, um, there's that. I think she forgot she has it in there. No, 100% she forgot. Okay, I even told her again yesterday. It's a peanut butter egg, in case I'm anyone's say, curious. Tell her what it is, she'll remember, but I did! Oh. Yeah, I told her, I said, you have a peanut butter egg in the fridge for you whenever you want it, and she's like, ooh, I like peanut butter eggs. I'm like, I know, that's why I got you one. So anyway, the next day was Wednesday. Um... We had kinder music. She's a bit shyer than normal. Um, and listen, I'm not one of those people that's going to be like, suck it up, kid. You should be engaging with your friends by now. Um, she just takes longer to warm up. And some days she needs more, like, hugs from mommy to feel safe. This was one of those days, I guess. But, um, I had a like a free beverage so we went to Duncan and I put it in and it wasn't taking it off and I was like what's going on here and then I realized it was only for hot coffees and I was like well okay so I ended up getting a hot coffee that it wasn't even a coffee I was like I might as well get like an expensive drink if I get it for free you know um so I got like a latte or something just it was just underwhelming I was more in the mood for an iced beverage but I clearly didn't get that so um and then we went, there's a local pizza joint that we like, and we went there for lunch, and the owner's daughter is, I think she's a year older than Briar, and she is often there when she's not in school, um, and she just sits in the back room and watches videos on her tablet or plays games or whatever, because mom is very busy working and um, dad is... Uh, working and um you know the second briar saw her back there she's like can i go back there and i'm like first of all she looks like she's with her daddy i i have no idea if that's her father or not but i was like you know we can ask but right now we're gonna eat lunch and then we can worry about it so she ended up being able to go back there and she hung out they hung out for like five or ten minutes and um it was funny because i could hear the other little girl being like this is my friend i love her so much but she couldn't remember briar's name and briar couldn't remember her name and it's just funny because, you know, kids 
don't understand the concept of like there can be more than one person in the world with with that name but then when they hear a name they've never heard they're like i what is this and she does have a unique name and i'm not going to say it for like the privacy of that family but um it's just funny and uh i've never met anybody with that name or no it was funny because when we told your mom about it she was like well that's an unusual name and i'm like well you know she might think your name is unusual like Sorry that we're not naming our kids classic names. Briar is definitely not a classic name. Somebody asked Briar yesterday if she was named after Briar Rose, and Briar just like stared at her blankly, and I was like, she has no idea what that means. Um, spoiler alert, she was not. But um, we went there, and then like the level of her like not listening that day in the morning was like driving me nuts. So after lunch and after nap, I was like, okay. Let's have some fun. Sorry, I'm trying to take a sip of water. I have, like, almost nothing left, so that's not working out in my favor. But I was like, why don't we go bowling? Now, listen, my husband, not a fan of bowling. Has never been a fan of bowling. I like bowling. I'm not very good at bowling, but I do enjoy it. Um, Briar has seen it in, like, movies or whatever recently, and she's been asking about it a lot. And um, I don't know if the hours have shifted because of like covid or if they always had like fluctuating hours there i feel like i have to put more ink in this pen wax in this pen definitely not ink um but i'm not until i need to but uh we went after her nap so we get there and it was definitely i'm gonna call this their morning crew they worked from noon to five and then the second group of people work from five to, I don't know if it's five to nine or five to 10. Either way, there was definitely a shift change while we were there. So we were bowling and, um, you know, we got our lane and the older gentleman who helped us, you could tell like he was new or didn't understand the technology, which is totally fine because solidarity, brother, I don't understand technology either. But he was like, okay, so how many games do you need? I'm like, one. And he's looking at me, and I'm like, there's three of us, we'd like one game. He's like, well, that's three games then. And I'm like, okay, I would like one game per person. However many you're charging me for, that's what I, I, all three of us are going to bowl. And he's like, okay, so you need three. And I'm like, sure, I need three. And I said, if I want to do another one when this one's over, I can just come back to the counter and buy another round. And he was like, absolutely. So... He's asking us our shoe sizes, and then Brian's like a 15, and the guy just looks at him and he goes, uh, I'm pretty sure that the biggest one we have is a 14, and he's just looking at Brian, and he's like, all right, I guess I'll try the 14 then. You know, like, what, what is Brian supposed to say at that point? Like, oh, can I just wear my regular sneakers? Um, which, honestly, that's probably what would have happened had the 14s not actually been the only size that fit. I was there not too long ago with my old job on a, like, Did a you bowl, though, thing. when you were there? Huh? Did you bowl when you yeah, were there? Oh, everyone did, and I know they had my size when I was there. That's why I was like, well, who knows? Maybe they sold. Yeah, and this young guy comes out, and he's like, "Oh yeah, we do. We just keep the rare sizes over here, you know. I.e., we only have one of each of these sizes, and they had up to a seventeen there. But, um, so we got our lane, and we were bowling, and Briar had bumpers, and. First game I won, I was super excited. I broke 100. I mean, like, I literally got, like, 101 or 102. Like, very just broke 100. And then the next game, uh, we went to play, and they had changed staff. So, follow me here. If you're not very good at math, um, just kind of listen with a grain of salt. So, oh, these are stuck together. These are stuck together. Those are stuck together. I do have a grinder. Uh, drill grinder, drill separator, whatever you call them. Um, in case you guys have never seen one, this is what it looks like. You just put your drills in, and then you just go like this, and they separate. Um, but I just needed one. So anyway, I go, and I was like, okay, I'd like to get another, we want to get another game for all of us. And the girl goes, okay, that'll be $9. So I hand her a $10 bill. And she goes, she's got the $1 change in her hand. She goes, Oh, I didn't, I didn't, I only did it for three of you. And I'm like, oh, okay. And she goes, so that'll be 350 Now, listen, 
I didn't know if maybe the rates were different because I had a child with me or what. Um, we had paid two fifty per person before five because they have like a cheaper rate during the day. Um, great, cool. So she's looking at me and goes, "Do you have another fifty cents?" And I go, "For what?" And she goes, "It's three fifty." I go, "Yeah," and I gave you four dollars. And she goes. I go, oh, I gave you $3 and you have the other one in your hand. She goes, oh no, it's four fifty. but I was counting this dollar. And I'm like, then you should have said it's four fifty. Like, anyway, so we're sitting there and then she says to the other girl who's working, um, how come they only charge them two fifty a game? And the girl said they were here for the early rate. We can honor that because they haven't left their lane. So, mind you, she's holding the... I had given her a 10. And she's holding the $3 I just gave her. And the $1. And I said... I get the, the, the change back and the two fifty, and she's just looking at me. I go, it's $7.50. I gave you a 10 and then there's an extra $4 in her hand. And she's just staring at me blankly. And I'm like, I don't know why this is complicated. Literally, give me all the change from the last round back and then give me $2.50 back. And she's looking at me like I'm trying to rip her off. And I'm like, literally, $7.50. The difference between 10 and seven fifty is $2.50. And she's just looking at me and I'm just like... Okay, I'll take that 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 change now. And like, oh my God. Like you would think that I just like she thought I was trying to scam her out of like hundreds of dollars. Like literally, two fifty. Just give me the, the change, lady. Anyway, so we bowled. They have a, a restaurant inside the bowling alley or connected to the bowling alley. And we went there for dinner. Um, the people in front of us, they were given the last high top, which I kind of wish. Low top. That's what I mean. The last low top. I kind of wish that they had said that to us when they sat him. Because then they look at me and they go, okay, let me take you to your table. And I'm like, uh, can we get a low top? And they're like, oh, we don't have any left. Um, not that the people in front of us probably would have taken the high top and realized like, oh, maybe we shouldn't make this family with a small child sit in a high top table. But it was like a nightmare. I had to sit with my leg pressed against Briar like the whole time so she wouldn't try to climb out or do anything lo and behold she wiggled her way out hit her head on the table um and we both thought like oh my god she hurt herself so bad but i think it was just one of those like the table sounded louder than it really was because she we was totally the table and it, like, rattled the table yeah and it. she was totally okay yeah I didn't um expect that. i didn't either so I was, we were both kind of like because we didn't want to react because we knew if we were like, oh my god, are you okay? And she was fine. She'd be like, ooh. We just kind of took her cues. Um, man, I feel like I need more water. But I don't feel like getting up. Let's see if I can get some more out of this thing. Shall we? I've got my juggy. Ah. Uh, room temperature sink water. Son of a bitch. Don't fall. Um, so, anyway, we did that. We went... We had, a, we had a lovely afternoon. It started out as a rough day, but it ended up being a totally fine evening. Um, but then I did my live prize giveaway for Alice in Winter Wonderland. If you guys didn't see that, I will link that one up in the eye. It was so much fun. I Do you guys enjoy when creators go live? Um, I, I used to go live sometimes multiple times a week on Instagram. Um... And I'm noticing now, like, when I go live, like, I'll be in there sometimes and, like, two people will be there. And people afterwards will be like, I didn't know you went live. I didn't get a notification. Uh, which, if you didn't know, you can turn notifications on for Instagram as well. Like, the same way you can for YouTube. But is that something you guys would like? Like, if I... I wouldn't say it's going to be a weekly thing. But if I went live every once in a while on YouTube, um, let me know down below. Um... But we had so much fun. So Thursday, we did one of the activities from her school bag. If you guys didn't hear me talking about that, I want to say it was in my last weapon chat. I could be wrong. Um, so we see her head teacher every other week. 
And she, they just got all this funding approved. So they have these activity bags. Each kid gets a bag and the activities, um, like once Briar's done with hers, it'll cycle to the next kid. And the one we're doing right now is all about emotions. So there's coloring activities, there's matching games, there's like social stories, um, and then there's uh, a few other things. And so we decided it was a gross day. Why don't we do one of the activities from the book or from the bag? And it was a coloring activity. So she was super excited. It was like the red monster. And then you have to color the red monster red. And then you have to tell me what that emotion is and what does it look like and, you know, things like that. Because we're actually, it was very coincidental that this is the project bag we got. Because this is actually what we're working on a lot at home is really, like, naming the emotions. Because it's really hard for little kids. Like, they don't understand what things look like and feel like. And if you don't tell them that this, that you're, what you're feeling right now, that is anger. And it's okay to be angry. And that's, you're, you're sad. That makes you feel sad, huh? It's okay to be sad. And, you know, of course, like, we're naming the emotions and Briar's like, this is anger. And I'm like, that's right. And she's like, mommy gets angry a lot. And I'm like, yes, I do, kid. Yes, I do. Which is super, like, sad when she says that because I know that's how she feels. Um, which is true because I feel that way too. But um, then she's like, I want hot dogs for lunch. I'm like, well, we don't have any hot dogs. So we did a Walmart delivery order and we ended up doing hot dogs for dinner, which um, can you guys guess how many hot dogs Briar ate for dinner? Go ahead and guess. I'll tell you the answer is zero. <laughs> zero. I'm like, what the heck, kid? Um, but it was good. It, we, had, we had a fun time. And then um, we <coughs> had another incident where she had pooped in her diaper um, and this time we're in the bathroom, we're cleaning it up. The number one rules are don't touch your hair, don't touch your face. Because it's inevitable. She's going to get poop on her hands and then we're going to wash our hands. But the problem is she gets poop on her hands and then the media instinct is, let me cover my face. Which is what she did. So she was dangling her hair, not intentionally, into the poop. And then she got the poop on her hands onto her face. And I was like, I'm done. I'm done. Like, please, kid. So here I am, like at this point, I have just lost my shit, you guys. I'm like screaming. I'm like, why don't you listen to me? And I know that me being upset doesn't help her stay calm. Like, I'm, I'm aware of that. But you guys, I just, I, when I say I hit my breaking point, like, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that it, I'm still functioning. Like, I just, <sighs> And so then, now we have poop on the hair, poop on the face, and I'm like, I'm done. I'm just putting you in the tub. So, I threw her in the tub. It was just one of those, like, God damn it, kid kind of moments. Like, ah! Oh. <sighs> I think she got into her diaper three times this week. Or got touched poop in some capacity three times this week, which is three times too many for me. But I'm so over this, and I'm just like... <sighs> but she is allowed, like I said... One soft friend up at bed at nighttime. So we are in her room and all of a sudden there are these two kitties. And I'm like, where are they, these kitties come from? Well, apparently she had stashed them at some previous point in her drawer. And it makes sense now because she was saying to my husband, this is the one I want. This is the one I want. I want this to be my soft friend. And he's like, okay. Because now she had three soft friends in her room. But she was saying that because she wanted the other kitty and what other other toys she had with her to go out of the room. And that was the one she wanted. Um, but I'm just, you guys, I am just over it. I am, I am tired of dealing with this. I am tired of feeling like I'm doing a piss poor job. I'm tired of feeling like I've got the only child on the planet who doesn't listen, which I know every child doesn't listen. Um, and I know you have to be more worrisome of the kids who don't ever push back because then they're internalizing all of those feelings and emotions. But damn, yo, it is, it is just, it is a lot. So, um, Friday, oh, Friday was the day that she found the, the kitties. Sorry. 
Um, so she went to bed. She had this tiny little bat. It's super cute. Um, it's very little. I would say maybe like three, four inches long. And Brian was like, I was wondering why this was under her door. Well, she had shoved it under her door so that she could get rid of one of the toys in her room. And that's why she said, Daddy, this is the one I want. So, well, I can't fault her for like, oh, girl, you stashed these toys in here previously. I did think it was pretty entertaining that she was like, I'm trying to fess up and, and do the right thing. And, you know, the little brain of a four-year-old. Oh, there's some static in this one. Folks, um... But let's see, what else do we do? Um, oh, so this was funny. We we did a Staples run. And my husband was like, look, I need to know, do you guys want to come with me and sit in the car? Which is what we usually do. Or do you want to stay home? And Briar's hell humming back and forth. And I was like, Briar, do you want to go? And she's like, can we go inside Staples? And I'm like, no, Briar, daddy's going inside Staples, taking care of what he needs to. And then you and I will stay in the car. And she's like, okay, I want to do that. So we do that and we're in the car and um, I am putting together a lunch order. We're going to go pick it up at Panera. Um, my husband had to go to the UPS store, which is in the same shopping center as Panera. And so she goes... Can we go eat at a restaurant? I said, no, Briar. Mommy's in pajamas. And she goes, well, I'm not. Can I go eat at a restaurant with daddy? And I was like, what? No. And she goes, you can just sit in the car. It's fine. And I'm like, no, kid. That is that is 100% not how this works. Like, But she was so deadpan on it that like, she really thought, she's like, well, I, mommy can just sit in the car for an hour and I'll just go inside with daddy. Um but we, oddly enough, my husband and I both ordered the new Mexican street corn chowder, which wasn't bad. Um, I did a pick two, which is like my favorite thing to do. Um, but I just wasn't in the mood for a sandwich or a salad. Um, one of my biggest gripes with Panera is that I'm pretty sure every single salad has chicken. That's fine. I don't mind that it has chicken. But if I remove the chicken, it doesn't lower the price. But if I want to add additional chicken, I have to pay a couple extra dollars. And I'm like, well, then you should take that charge off if I don't want the chicken. Um, the one time I ordered a salad and my husband wanted extra chicken and I was like, dude, I'm just going to take mine out and give it to you. And he's like, oh, that works. So I think I did it with like the chicken on the side. Um, and then he literally just dumped it into his salad. But, um, it was, it was, she was funny. She was a hoot. Sometimes that kid is a hoot, you know? Um, did I do anything else on Friday? I feel like, I feel like I need to get you guys to like the creme de la creme of this week. So Saturday, Saturday was our first official start of T-Ball. So my husband and I get to where we're going. We had never been there. So we didn't know if it was going to be busy. We didn't know, we didn't know how this worked. So we show up, we find one of, like, very few parking spaces, which makes me hella nervous because we got there so early and next week is actually the opening day ceremonies and people were telling us, like, people line up down the streets and I'm like, <sighs> my husband is one of, like, the assistant coaches. So we get over, we find our team. There's no signage, by the way. They literally set up, there's, like, three pitcher's mounds and fields and then they set up the other three fields in the outfield of those I think I think it was six it might have been four whatever it was it might have been two and then they sit two up in the outfield or three and two three in the out whatever so um because these are all little kids we're talking four I think it's four five and six is this um like preschool kindergarten league if you will what color am I working on g so we go over we finally find our stuff and it is freezing it is like literally like low 30s um in april it is never like this here where it i shouldn't say never but usually by april it's warm enough that we don't need to be wearing our winter jackets and you know i know it's not going to be like this forever i know that not every time we go to t-ball is it going to be cold but briar had on a long sleeve shirt and her fleece jacket and then I had a sweatshirt with me in case she needed it. And then 
they gave her her jersey. So we get to our team, small little team. Briar is by far the littlest one on the team. She is the only girl on the team. I assume she is the youngest on the team. Um, so we are out there. We get the shirts get handed out. You could put a request for what number you wanted. Uh, my husband wanted number eight, and so did a bunch of other parents because Cal Ripken of the Baltimore Orioles, or formerly of the Baltimore Orioles, um, is his favorite baseball player, like, of all time. Uh, we've also met him, like, in real life at a book signing, and he is genuinely one of the nicest, most generous people you will ever meet. Uh, so apparently all these other families also wanted number four. And I think what happens is I think they went in order of their request and printed them from the smallest to the largest. And because my daughter got the smallest shirt on the team, I think that's why she got the eight. And then, so they did an 18, a 28 and an 88. And, uh, it was funny because some of these kids were like, I had a different number last year. And they were like, well, a bunch of kids requested it. And this is how they printed them. Like the, the coach had nothing to do with that. Like he was literally just given a list. Um, but my kid wears like a 3T, 4T, and uh, the shirt is a youth extra small, so it's definitely big on her. But we put it on over her jacket. Okay, well, then she got cold. And I said, well, then let me put your sweatshirt on. And she's like, okay. And I'm like, we have to take your shirt off first. She's like, no, like screaming at me. And I'm like, Briar, we have to take your sweatshirt, your shirt off so we can put the sweatshirt on. So we ended up putting the sweatshirt over the jacket because God forbid, I wasn't going to get that. That was not going to happen. Um, and then we put, so now it's long sleeve shirt, zipped up jacket, sweatshirt, jersey on top. Then they give us the hats. The hat at the smallest we can make it is still too big for Briar's head. Even though Briar's four, she's very, very petite. And she has a very, very little head, which she did not get from her daddy. And, um, like, I'm telling you, these are youth size hats. And she needs a toddler size hat. Well, you know, they're adjustable. So I think they think, well, if we adjust it, they'll fit everybody. Incorrect. So the way it works is the first, like, 45 minutes they had practice where they learned some skills. And there were a couple of the guys on the team that, again, reminder, they're like four and five years old. I know the one kid is about to be six, but I don't know if any of the kids are actually already six. But you can tell that some of these kids are raised in houses where, I don't know if they have, if they have older siblings or not, but their parents are very serious about sports. Because they took one look at Briar and they're like, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. Oh, I don't want to be her partner. And it's like, God damn, like she's... We're talking about my kids in a preschool age. Like she would, she's not even going to be in kindergarten next year. Like we're we're talking about a kid who's in like she would be in pre three, whatever they want to call it. Um, and she ended up partnering with this little guy who you could see he wasn't super thrilled. And his, I think his dad said something to him like, "You need to be a good." like good sportsmanship conduct and and he was like okay and so then she would try to catch the ball or whatever and he'd be like good try good try and he was very very sweet to her but you could see some of the other kids in the team were like less than enthused that they had this little girl in their team now mind you the team we played had like three or four girls in their team and i was like i wonder why they didn't split the girls up more evenly <laughs> You know, I'm sh if there were sisters, I would understand they would keep them together. But, like, why would you have one team that a third of their team is girls and the other team where they have literally one girl? Um, not that we need to make these sports about, like, girls versus boys or, or anything gender equality or anything like that at all. But I think to make it more even and to give my child an opportunity to not be, like, ostracized for being the only girl, which uh, I don't think... I think that it's not going to be that big of a deal if she just gets her crap together. So, then the game starts, okay? So, then Briar decides she's done. She doesn't want to be in the outfield. And we literally had two innings. So, all of the kids played in the outfield and all of the kids batted. And we did it one more time for each. And that was it. So, um, and they do it to, like, every kid comes home like it's not like they just leave somebody on the base and then they're like next round next inning um so briar comes over she's literally laying in the grass 
talking to all of the adults and I'm like, Briar, get out there. And she's like looking at me and she goes, I'm not very good at this. And I, I said, okay, well, we're going to have a moment here, friend. You're not going to be good at something you've never done before. But you're not going to be good at something if you don't try it and practice it. I said, you have to learn the skills. Remember when you started ice skating and you couldn't even stand up on the ice? And now you can skate backwards and you can do your mingo and you can jump and you can do all these things. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, you have to learn the skills and then you have to practice them. And she's just looking at me like, I don't want to do that. And I'm like, well, that's how this works. Now, my husband has committed to being one of the coaches. So even if Briar decides I'm done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. My husband committed to something and he's going to see it through. Um, he would much rather see it through with his wife and daughter by his side than him being there by himself with a bunch of other kids that aren't his. Um, so I'm like, Briar, if you're done, then we're done. We're going to go home. As soon as daddy's done coaching, we're going to go home. I want to, I want to eat at a restaurant. I'm like, Briar, we are not talking about eating at a restaurant right now. We are just worried about baseball and then that's it. So she's humming and humming, and then all of a sudden it's like, all right, now great team's up to bat. And she's like, I want to do that. I'm like, mm, of course you do. We have a tee at home. So she has had some moments where she's, like, hit the ball insanely far, and we were we were all shocked that she had that much strength and power behind it. Um, so she knew I could be I could be good at this. And so she went out, and I was like, Briar, that's not how this works. Like, from here on out, like, you can't just decide you only want to bat. So we get to the batting. She doesn't understand you have to wait in line. Finally, it's her turn. She really wants to wear one of the helmets. Remember I said my kid is a real peanut head? Yeah, well, the helmets don't fit her. And it wouldn't have been a big deal except for that my child was insisting on wearing a helmet. So I took off. She had a non-team uh, baseball cap on, like an infant-sized baseball cap on. Um, that she was wearing had nothing to do with the team, but I was like, girl, you need to wear a hat. Um, so we put it, I put it on her backwards. Meanwhile, my husband's like between first and second base or second and third. I don't even know where he was at this point. And Briar is, I had to put the helmet on, the hat on backwards to hold it up enough. And it's still covering her eyes. So she's literally holding the helmet up and keeping her head up so she can kind of see she hits the ball and then we're like, run to first, run to first, run to first. And she's like wandering from here to there. And I'm like, Briar. So I'm literally getting up from where I am, running from the home plate to first base with her. Go, 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 go. And then the next kid comes up and as she's running, her helmet falls off, doubles back around to get her helmet. I'm running with her to second base. Like she is not understanding. Like you have to go from point A to point B. And, like, my kid is notorious for, like, she she knows that the shortest distance between two points is, like, a direct line. But she, at home, like, I'll be like, can you go give this to Daddy? He'll be sitting on the couch next to us. She'll, like, go into the kitchen, come back around. I'm like, Briar, just go over to Daddy. Why are you complicating this? Um, and all of the adults, every single one of the adults is like, just take the helmet off. Take that. And, no, I don't want to. So she's running, trying to hold her helmet up. Oh, my God. And then... We get out and we're back in the in the field again and she doesn't want to be out there again. And I'm like, Briar, just stand out there. I'm like, just go stand with daddy. Go stand with daddy. She went out there for a few minutes and then came back out and did the same thing again. So I was like, well, this is turning into um, something super enjoyable next week. And this is like a half hour away. OK, next week we have to be there at 815 in the morning because it's opening ceremony, team photo days. Um, so as far as I know, there's no actual games being played. Um, and sounded like there wasn't. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. And I think that they do it by age. I think they do like the little kids go very first thing in the morning and then they go up to the kids who are in like the 12 and under league, 14 and under league, whatever it is. Um, you know, I'm not trying to make my kid be the next best baseball player, but like I need her to participate in a capacity that doesn't involve her trying to sing and dance to all of the adults. And this is how you can tell my kid is around adults all the time and not children because she would much rather hang out in the grass with all the adults and she started like shaking her butt like literally she hit the ball the first time and then she ran to go grab the ball and I'm like that's the other team has to get the ball and she's like no <laughs> kid you're killing me so then we're driving home we decide we're gonna go I thought like my husband wasn't very hungry his belly was bothering him 
we wanted to stop somewhere like I wanted a cup of coffee. I was thinking like a coffee shop kind of place that has like, you know, little breakfast sandwiches, lunch sandwiches. That would be great. So we get to this restaurant and um, they normally have a sign up that says seat yourself, but they didn't. So I waited in line and then the guy's like, oh, yeah, you can seat yourself. And then he goes, we actually don't have any tables uh, for three. And I'm like, oh, because every group of two sat at the tables that or four tops or the booth or whatever, instead of taking the table for two. And he's like, well, I can see if we can find a chair, which would literally block off the walkway. So we take Briar outside and cue the massive meltdown that happens because she wants to eat in a restaurant. And I'm like, Briar, there is nowhere for us to sit. Okay, so I have to apologize here. If you guys, if this seems disjointed, my camera just finished ending. So I'm going to try to wrap this up real quick here. My daughter was really upset that we couldn't eat at this restaurant because she just wanted to eat at a restaurant. She could not comprehend that we just, there was nowhere for us to sit. Um, so she ended up calming down. We were sitting in the grass. We ended up going over to Duck Donuts, um, and that worked out for us, but it was just a really hard, hard day because she didn't want to participate. She didn't want to listen. She didn't want to try to understand what was going on. And I understand some of these are adult concepts, but, um, it was just, you know, once she was having her temper tantrum in the grass, she said to me, well, mommy, there was a table outside. And I said, if you had just said that, instead of locking yourself up and screaming that you don't want to get in the car and that you, you want to eat at a restaurant, like maybe we could have gotten a to-go order to sit outside, but we didn't get to. But um, um, my phone apparently is running out of space, so I'm going to end this one here. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you made it all the way to the end, leave me some baseball type emoji. Let me know you made it all the way to the end. Um, hopefully next week we don't have so many poop gate updates, but you know, it is what it is. This is real life. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please make sure to give this video two thumbs up. One real life, one virtual. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Come join the Sparkle Squad. And while you're there, hit that notification bell. Hey. I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler standard time and I record my tiny human is sleeping or sleeping. Thank you guys so much for being here and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.